Hello ladies, I'm glad to have you with me. You have either found me accidentally or I have pointed you to this video because you have received card kits in the mail. The way to earn a card kit in the mail is either by purchasing $50 or more through me of Stampin' Up! product or you could purchase the card kits for $10 a month. These card kits are mailed to you and it's a new program I'm starting and I'm just really glad that all of you are able to participate in this um, endeavor. Don't want to say um. Okay, hopefully I'll get better at these videos as we go along. But I well, today we're going to use the Let's Set Sail bundle because I can send you punches and dies along the way. So let's go through your kit first to see what should be in your kit. And you have a very small piece of white that is basically one inch by one and a half inches. And then you have this white piece, but you're gonna have corners cut off and a slit for ribbon. And I'm gonna go through that on the uh, video so that you can see how to do that. And then you should have a boat with masts, a sun, a cloud, some turquoise glimmer paper, and then a turquoise mat. And then you should have a piece of white that's already been punched out here. And then another piece that has DSP already on it, cuts already made, and score marks already made. But I'm gonna go through that here so that if you want to repeat this card, you will know how to do those things. But you should have everything ready to go with us. And I'm gonna tell you that some of this is gonna go a little bit out of order. Well, there's no order to it because in the end you still get your card made. So. We're gonna start by gluing on the pieces to this shimmery uh, turquoise, that new in color, tempting, to, no, that's the old one, Tahitian Tide, sorry. Tahitian Tide glimmer paper because it takes a little bit longer to dry on this paper. So I want to do that picture first and then set it aside and then we'll get to the mechanics of this card one of the first things I want to do is glue my cloud to my sun so that the sun is just peeping out of this cloud here. And that will eventually go up there. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that. And you can do that with me, with your sun and your cloud. I have used the thing with the adhesive that you choose on glimmer paper, you do have to be careful because so much won't stick to it over time. I'm using our liquid Tombow glue mono adhesive. I just find this to be one of the best and cheapest for that matter, but one of the best glues to really hold things, whether you're making boxes or adhering to some glimmer paper, which is of course what we're doing today. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit of adhesive on this, what do you call the boat with the mast? A boat with the mast? Skeleton of the ship? I'm not sure, but anyway. And I really don't wanna to put too much glue on so that it oozes out. This can be sort of an, you know, one has to have a light touch with, with glue. So then I'm gonna bring this over a little bit to the side and down of the cloud as though the ship or is sailing. Is it a ship, yacht, sailboat? Sailboat, I guess. It's sailing right out of the picture. And then we're gonna put these sails on and you can see how just the punch can put together this cute little boat which I've always thought, um, here's that punch again so that you can see it. Uh, it puts together very quickly. I think of if, you, you know, little boys birthdays or whatever that they can look really nice. So now I am going to 
it did occur to me I could punch these up. Let me see, I have a little punch here. I don't wanna pre-punch your glimmer paper before it goes out because if I, if you don't really want that, then, and I don't know that I can get this in anyway, so we might forget that whole thing. Um, if you wanted to put these up on dimensionals, dimensionals do not stick to glimmer paper. So what I was thinking right there is if I put a hole in here and put a dimensional in it, then I could bring these up. But then of course I can't get the punch to reach over on this side enough to get that up. I don't know, what would it look like if I just raise up one sail? Yeah, I'm gonna just stick to what was my original plan, ladies. But if you guys wanna punch holes in yours so they'll go up on dimensionals, have at it. Okay, so I'll put some glue on. This is from our T Boutique DSP. One of the things I love about Stampin' Up's DSP is that it has the theme or the season that the DSP is meant to coordinate with but they're pretty good about having the other side have something pretty generic so that it can be used year round and for lots of different projects. So I just really like this yellow with the sun there and I want this to be a bright, happy card. I did find out last night that my Daniel is just got his start date at Cape Air. So his training starts on the 12th of September and he goes up to Boston at that part will start out virtual, but he'll have to be in, whoa, the Hyannisport area to start on the 19th of September, which is easy for me to remember because it's my brother's birthday too. Now be really careful here. Do you, I don't know if you guys saw that I just had glue on my finger, and so I tore some of the mast of this boat. It's a good way for you guys all to see that we all have our own problems too. I can fix this and will later on by punching out another mast, and I'll just put that over. But then you wanna just set that aside to dry when it's done. So be careful with that glue. All right, so I'm gonna put that aside. And then I wanna show you that, I'm gonna rub this extra glue off. All right. Okay, so this is our very new, in the mini Ju uh, July to December, very best trio punch. It really actually does more than three different punches, which I'll show at another time. Some of you have already seen that anyway. But I'm gonna take this, this is a three, if you want measurements, this is a three inch by four and three quarter inch piece of white. And I'm gonna bring this right into the center. There is a line here for the center and you could mark it with a pencil. But I just look at the two sides here and I just kind of visually give it a go of where I think the center is. Punch down. And now I have a slit for ribbon later. Now I'm gonna turn it. and punch both sides. And now you see I've got more of a tag or ticket. In this case, it's gonna be our mechanism for this fancy card. I don't know how fancy it is, but that's what it is. And I know at least one of you has a different card design um, and I've sent you photos because you had a special request. And so, some of this doesn't quite line up, but you also have the shimmer paper, and so the same things apply. You wanna do that part first. And yours might take a little longer, so you can just pause the video. Okay, so you have two pieces that I've already punched for you, and I've already put this DSP on, and that's because I needed to cut it and score it for you in advance. But I did want you to see you can use any kind of punch you want here to be able to pull up this mechanism when the time comes. And I just really like this punch because I, I like the little design that you get with it. So I've already punched those for you, but I wanted you to see how I did that. 
And then on your folds, oh, I thought I'd check to make sure my bone folder was right here before we get started. Oh, why I don't, I gotta get better at these videos. Okay, so I'm gonna make mine without a bone folder. So that just shows you, you don't really need a bone folder to do this card. Just check in here to see if it's, oh no, okay. Um, and actually before I fold it, I wanted to be able to give you measurements to score it. So I'm gonna pretend to put this card together from start to finish and hope that you can follow it so that you can repeat this card. And I'll just remind you, it's called a pull-up slider card. So this tempting, not uh, Tahitian Tide quarter sheet, which means it measures four and a quarter by five and a half. It's a full like card front. And then you have a white measuring exactly the same. I did trim it slightly under just so that no white peeps out over the top, but it's, you know, it's just a hair. In fact, I don't even know if I can notice it. So basically you have these two quarter sheets, one in white and one in whatever color you're choosing, but today you have the Tahitian Tide. I've already put a piece of DSP over that that measures four inches by five and a quarter inches. And then the first thing I did, because you have to put the adhesive all over the entire bit of DSP so that it's sticking everywhere once you've cut and folded. So the first thing I did was I put my edge here to three quarters of an inch, which is this line here. I came down three quarters of an inch from the top and then I cut, I'm gonna do this just cause mine's already cut and I don't want, I'm gonna do it with my scoring tool cause I wanna make sure, but this would be your cutting blade. And then you would bring it all the way down to four and three quarters, which is again, three and a quarter inches from the base. Then flip it over like this. Same thing, three quarters of an inch from there. You can either start where you ended at four and three quarters and go back up to three quarters of an inch. Either way you do it, if you start and come down or start here and go up, you wanna cut it a few times because you are cutting through two layers, not just the cardstock, but the DSP as well. And then finally at one end, and if you haven't done your punch yet, it doesn't matter which end or your scoring, but otherwise you need to have it um, on the opposite side to where you've punched your top. So we have three quarters of an inch here and we just make these two cut lines meet and that way you have this piece cut out with your punch at the top. Then you have to do your scoring and I've actually changed up my scoring for this card and I've <laughs> never done it with this new scoring and I'm hoping it works otherwise I gotta start all over. But I did you have, so you have three quarters of an inch here. I wanted a whole inch before my next quarter. So three quarters plus an inch would mean at one and three quarters, you're gonna score just between those cut lines, okay? I'm gonna tell you I love my Simply Scored tool. It makes much better score marks than this and you really have to run this a few times to get it. Your next score is going to be at three and a quarter. And again, you're going to score it between those cut lines. And then finally, you can do it by putting this back at your three quarters of an inch on this side. But if you need this measurement, it's four and three quarters. And again, score it really well between those two lines. And that's all you need to do to set up for this pull-up slider card. Okay, so now I recommend that you go ahead and ideally with your bone folder, which I am really gonna wonder where that went. It's probably on the floor. Okay, and then the opposite way, and then the opposite way again. Okay, so does that make sense how you did that? So you fold it up at this mark 
and then mountain, so valley fold, mountain fold, valley fold, all right? Once you've done that, you wanna flip that over, take your pre-punched card that measures three inches by four and three quarters, and we're gonna put adhesive just on this end rectangle here. Don't go all the way to the edge with your mono glue because you don't want to make it stickier than it needs to be. And there's enough surface there that when you glue this on, it should stick very well. Okay, so we're gonna flatten that out and you are gonna put this right down to that cut mark. Try to make sure you've overlapped it evenly on both sides. That's looking good to me. And it should happen to where this ends at the same place your card ends, all right? Boy, I say all right a lot. Things you notice when you're making a video. Okay, there you go. And so now we're ready to put on this back piece. And we do that by, again, running glue down the side. Not too close to the edge, again, because it's just so messy. Ask me how I know. You know, it's interesting when I look at this, I can see this side's a little thinner, but it should still work the mechanism fine. In other words, I didn't get it exactly in the center, which actually is good for you guys to know because then you know that imperfections are okay. I did use, I should tell you, this is our normal basic white, but this is our thick basic white. I think it's important that the mechanism, because you're gonna be pulling on it a lot, has a thicker white base to it. Okay, so here we go. I've lined that up, it should line up. If anything, you should see a tiny bit of blue outline here, but I, you can see just a tiny bit. And here's the front of the card. And if anybody's questioning their pattern here, I gave everybody the same pattern and then didn't have enough for myself. So I switched the pattern for myself. It wasn't on purpose. You can see that this original card I did here used that same pattern that you had with that free set that I was telling you about. Okay, back to our present card. You can try it and see how that's working. Is that pulling up? And I can tell you if it's sticking at all, sometimes glue's gone out too much, so it's, it's sticking because of that glue. So it's a good idea to run it a few times. Just don't run it so fast and so much, like I almost just did, that you start to twist and turn that mechanism. But that looks like it's working really well. So now, this has had a chance to dry. And I am going to adhere it here. And mount it on. I love this shimmery. This is part of the in color shimmer, shimmer paper that comes in six by six. And I love it because, well, it's shimmery, but I just think of being out on a sailboat against the ocean water and sky and having that little glisten. So I did start to tell you that I am gonna be giving this card to Daniel as he goes off to train to be a pilot for Cape Air because I know that's a real adventure for him. I know he's so excited. He has just been waiting and waiting for that call. He, they did tell him that it would be about the third week of September, and so they were true to their word. He did get a little pay rise, but I'm sure that's given the situation of our economy right now. So we're glad of that. Um, and he just loves to fly, so the pay actually doesn't end up mattering so much to him anyway. I'm gonna tell you a little later why I changed these measurements, which, what it looks like the, the mechanism was working fine too, so 
It's always nice to change up things sometimes to find that out. But the reason I did that is because before there was only three quarters of an inch here to put your greeting. And I find a lot of the greetings that I want to put on something are actually wider than that. And so I'm going to get that little last remaining white piece here. And I am, by the way, this is the in color sweet sorbet too. I just feel like these are really bright and happy colors. And I'm going to stamp from this same stamp set. Adventure awaits. There we go. And now I can put this up on dimensionals right here. So you can see that if you have a, a message. In fact, I'm going to give you guys a little bit longer strip. I wanted mine to be more about the size of the verse, but I don't know what verses you guys will be using, so you can cut it and trim it down if you want. But if I had scored at the three-quarter mark, it would be really hard to fit this here. So you can play with your measurements once you kind of get an understanding of the mechanism and how it works. And I'm going to put these on dimensionals. Oops. And then we're going to stamp on the inside too. You'll see that in a second. Okay, so we have Adventure Awaits. There you go. And then you pull it up. And it's nice if you can hold the card like this too. But to help the recipient to know that they are intended to pull this up, if the big notch doesn't give them a clue, we're, we can put in some ribbon. And so this is our sweet sorbet ribbon. And I wanted something thin enough because you don't want it so bulky you can't get it right at this edge here. If it's too bulky, you won't be able to get it into the um, envelope. And I'm realizing my scissors are probably down with my, and I really do need my scissors this time. So, I got that. And look at me eyeballing it. I will measure yours. Because this can be slippery. And if we do our usual knot type effect on this slot here, it will come undone. So you want to fold the ribbon in half, put it through, and you've got this loop. And that's how we've always done it. But unless you did it really long, but you can see that over time that really loosens up. And you could. You could just leave it like that and fold it down, and it will go in an envelope just fine. But what I'm doing with my extra bit is I'm basically making it a bow which will keep it from slipping past there. Well, at least I hope it will keep it from slipping past there. So there you go. It also might make it a little bit more noticeable to the recipient that they're to pull this. I can fuss with a bow for a long time, you all who asked me to do bows for you sometimes don't realize that I can fuss with a bow for a while. All right, and then I'm gonna trim it. You know what? I think I did this with another one. I'm gonna make these bows loops bigger to begin with because I tie them in a knot so that they really won't come undone. And as I said, this ribbon's so thin that you can do that and still not create too much bulk. So how'd you like that fancy bow tie? Now hopefully you've all seen there's nothing special about the way I tie a bow. There we go. So there's the card. And when, they, when you put it in the envelope, you can just work this around the back so that you're not taking up more room there or however work it around the front and it's the same thing. I don't know why I said work it around the back. You want to work it around the front so that they see it. 
Okay, so here we go. Worked around the front. You can play with yours for a little bit. Okay, now I want to stamp on the inside. So I'm going to pull this up. And I want to stamp in the sweet sorbet. Do I? Or do I want to do that in blue? I had, I'm going to do it in the sweet sorbet because I also decided I'm going to put some of the birds that come in this set with it. So... And you want to, you don't have to sign here, and I'll show you that in a minute, if you want to sign your card too. <laughs> okay. And yes, these reds do stain your photopolymer stamps, but that just shows you're having fun. So I have Let Your Dreams Set Sail, which... You know, he is flying, not sailing. So maybe I should redo this whole card with some kind of airplane, but you ready? Here comes the flight. I'll do him here. So in the Tahitian Tide, I added some little blue birds. So there's our finished card. And I hope that you have greetings that will work for that. Too. Now I can, I can, if, if you want to, you can stamp up here as well. And you can even do that before you put it in. This one has, hope it's your best day ever, but this is really his life ambition. So I'm not going to use that one. So I'm just going to keep it as is. Mostly they tend to just pull it up and read this anyway and then they can set it on their desk. And this is just such a happy card. I hope you guys like it and are as happy with it as I am. Here's the other, I'm gonna put this up. And I'm gonna put this one up with the free celebration with a $50 order that's still going on for the month of August with this camper. All of this is done just with those free dies. I did add, you might like this, I did add the cloud and this, this is just a circle punched out and a cloud from one of my other die sets. But these are the, Chris, the trees that come with this camper set and I just cut them down the middle, laid them down at the base of the card and made that grass. So there's a thought for you if you have those dies. And I'll get those stamped up. Thank you again for your support. I do really, really appreciate it. Hope that I see you again next month.